Today I came here to share my success story with you. I am here to share the truth with you. And I am going to have a good 20 or 30 minutes to answer your questions. For me, it's more important to know what you think of me, what you can get out of me, what you're going to learn from me, what you're willing to teach me that I don't already know. I am taking that too. But I want to say I am very privileged to be with one of the best universities in Africa. has come at the right time to meet us. I want to tell you something that who wants to learn from the best? Well, I'm going to tell you something. The best would never teach you to become like them. They really enjoy their position. God would not teach you anything to form his miracles. He will protect you. He will guide you. He will give you wisdom. But he will not make you him. Yes. Your headmaster, your teacher, if you become the best like him. But I want to tell you something. You can always learn from the worst. Because when five of your friends are foolish, you become the sixth one. When five of your friends are sensible, you become the sixth one. When five of your friends are rich, you become the sixth one. Just make sure you choose the right people around your surroundings. But don't try to take someone else's glory. Everybody is unique in their own way. Find your way. Find your path. Walk on your path. Be bold on your path. Don't let anybody change your mind. Do you understand what freedom means? Yes. It means no, no fear. I have no fear. The freedom of fashion. The freedom of building wealth, the freedom of saying what I want to say, the freedom of taking a decision that a billion people are running away from, there is no fear. This is the definition of courage. And I know all of you are looking for degrees, but please activate your courage. Because you need courage to take decisions. The first thing in life is learn how to take decisions and be bold about it. Be courageous about it. Learn to tell your mother or your father who is a lawyer and telling you that you have to be a lawyer. 
when you know you're not your president. Please tell your mother no. I know who I'm becoming. I know who I'm going to be. Don't worry, I will come and take care of you. And very soon, you have to be bold and take decision. Now, I want to tell you, when you refuse to take a decision, what happens? You just make a choice. But choices are very wrong. You see? If it was that easy to make a choice, get rich. Get rich. So, you see? It's not easy to make a choice and let it become a reality. But when you take the decision and you know what you're doing in the next five years, people are going to look at you, an amazing man, in five years. Because great decision leads you to great paths, and great paths lead you to your destiny. Please, I want to advise all of you, and I know you're studying and you're going to acquire some degrees, but please take the decision on the path that you really want to work on. Do you know my job? I am a humanitarian philanthropist. Yes, that's what I am. I give. I just give to society. People don't understand that everything about me is to give back to you. I have built some wealth, but I'm showing it to you. I am giving it to you. You have to be the one that is inspired by what you see. I share everything I have proportionally, and it never runs out. So, I know that you want to become successful. You want to be rich. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you something about riches. When you acquire riches, money controls you. When you start to build wealth, you control money. But when you find your destiny, you start to chase legacy. A legacy, no money can buy. It's priceless. So even after I had some riches and I went into building wealth, I had to still move on to the next step. And that's me now chasing my legacy. My legacy is to be a leader. My legacy is not to be a rich man. My legacy is not to be a wealthy man. My legacy is to be a leader of a new generation, of a new nation, of a new country, of a new continent. I want history. I want to be part of the people in the books. I want to be remembered. And I want my absence to be felt when I'm not here. I want the things money cannot buy. I don't want Lamborghini anymore. I don't want Mercedes anymore. I don't want Genesis anymore. Listen, I am here to share my talking with you. I'm here to share my knowledge with you. There will be no value in this knowledge if I cannot share and live. And talking about riches and wealth and legacy, you see, when you change destiny, you will leave a legacy for real. When you change wealth, don't let money control you. It's the most powerful ornament that convinces humanity and moves us. It buys our time. Some even their soul is bought. Money is a powerful tool. In fact, I would like to break it down for you. Because some of you don't even know, I am your new IMF. I am the country's new 
I am in. I am truly fulfilled. Now I'm going to break down money for you. You know, everybody here is trying to acquire a degree so they can get a good job or they can start the business. You're going to spend eight hours of your day. If you're not working for yourself, you'll be working for someone else. You will do it five times in a week. It's only Sunday that you go to church to pray to God. And you're only going to give God two hours. But you give money 40 something hours a week. It's obvious you're worshiping money, but you don't know this. Okay? Now let me break it down for you what it says money. M says many will suffer me. O is telling you that over me many will die. And that never will you and I say no to I. And E is saying that eternal is my life. Yes, we will all leave it and it will still be here. But Y also says that yes, I am the root of all evil. So you know what you're doing. You know what you're chasing. You have to chase it. But when you get it, you have to build it with great intentions. Genuine intentions. You have to share it proportionally so God can put more in your hands. Because there is a good side to it and there is a bad side to it. Now, I know that you probably wanted to hear my chicken story, my scrub story, fake clothes story, but no, you already know that I am trying to give you the code. The code. The code. You like the code? Yes, so you got code number one, decision. When you take decisions, it's going to lead you to another thing. Once you take a decision, you become responsible for whatever you have decided. Now, let me give you this example. When I was in university, Westminster, I already had my own businesses. And the streets, I understood it very well. And money was definitely my girlfriend. I understood it too very well. But the lectures was quite difficult for me to understand the woman who was standing in front of me and I was sitting with one of the richest people in England, his son, in a lecture and this Polish woman said that you all need to study hard so one day you will get the best job. So I asked myself, am I looking for a job? And my spirit said no. You will give people jobs. So, guess what I did? I took one of the most critical decisions in my life. I had to become a dropout. I walked. And when I was walking, you want to know the first thing that came to my mind? I said that, listen, if I don't succeed in life, I have to be blamed for the decision I've taken. That was the very moment I felt the value of responsibility. I became responsible for my own decision. That is still with me up to date because I knew that if I don't make it because of the decision I took, then I have to make another decision. And taking more decisions can send you back. But it's always good to think. Now, come on. Let's hashtag that man again. What did he say? What did he say? Always is a what? Big a what? Thank him, man. Wait, I want to hear from you. Hashtag. I want you to start from the top. He is not thank him, man. The Listen, don't be a talkative. Be a thinker team. Think. You have to think. 
you have to think to your heart, your head stuck to head. You have to think. Use your brain cells. You know the power in thinking. Today is 2024, on uh, 22nd of March, am I right? We are not going to see today again, but this very moment, making money or becoming successful is not hard thinking. Sorry, it's not hard working, but hard thinking. Those who work smart are the ones who can move faster with technology. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be clever. You should be clever too. You have to have the two. Be clever and be smart. And be a great thinker. I think a lot. I think a lot and I'm going to tell you why. In the past 21 years, I have been into real estate and I have divided the real estate into four core departments. And I started with residential. And when I started with residential, I had a nightclub that I rented. And I took the money from everyone that came to the nightclub in a space of three weeks. Do you understand the strategy? Yes. Quick. You have to have speed. When you think, you have to think like a Lamborghini. So you move like a Lamborghini. You're fast like a Lamborghini. You pass everybody. When you're still at the back, you're far gone. You're ahead of them. When I took the money, I simply used the money to buy the building that I rented. That's how I got into real estate. And everybody was like, why would you open a nightclub for only three months and close it after? The money is only available from November to January. After January, everybody is broke again. They're going to be in the middle of February. It's Valentine. They take the money again. Present is gone. Before you know, the end of the month will come in February, then it's March, then everybody gets up to March, but they don't see anything. Then before they know, April comes, April full, it's Easter again, they'll take your money. Then before you know, May is the only month you may do something. And if you don't do it, the month after that is June, it's hot, everybody's head is hot. And July is going to come and just lie to you like June. And August, everybody... that all the lawyers, all the policemen, all the teachers, everybody goes on a holiday. Then they come back in September. September is the only month. If you did something in May, you will be harvesting it in September. It's the ninth month of the year. October, you're preparing yourself, but you don't know what you're preparing yourself for. You don't want to buy anything. You don't want to invest in anything. You don't want to do anything. And then come November, why, what are you looking for? You're preparing yourself again. By December, first December, you close your mind. You're still working, but it's a holiday already. And then, what do you do? You wait till 21st, 22nd. You start celebrating from 22nd. You will go, 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 and hit 29th, 31st, and 1st, and New Year, and 2nd, and 3rd, and you're going uh, by 7th, you're broke, flat, complete. You have to start the year. You see, your death is not that long, and there is not much you can hear or less uh, a thing can be. <laughs> you need to sell from the year. You need to beat time. You cannot life, but you can beat time. That's why I use time. That's why I use three months to take everyone's money that 
will come closer to me and exchange me for an entertainment. But I'm not here to entertain you because I'm not an entertainer. I'm an investor. Developer. I'm a money collector. I plant money. I water money. I let it grow. I invest it again. I build it again. And I'm measuring. I am measuring my time. I take risks with time. I move my steps with time. Because I know how to and take the right decisions in the time. Take decisions according to the time. Make sure. May have some water, please. Thank you. Make sure you take your time serious. Now let me go back to when I sold the building that I bought. I made some good profits on selling the building to some great man in this country. I wouldn't like to mention his name. But, but I took his money. It's not every money that pays. Some people's money is bloody. Don't go there. Some people's money, grace can come out of it. Look at the people you make all yourself with. You see, if you follow people and you try to take the money of people who are robbing people, killing people, duping people, that money will be duped before it comes to your pocket. There is no grace on it. So some billions learn to walk away from it. It's not everything that is for you. But definitely, this 300,000 was for me. Because I bought the building for 150 and it became double. You see, when you make 100% profit, profit is sanity. Anything else is vanity. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Listen, I am serious. When you make a profit, you become sane. Even when God realized that in human beings is possible to him, because human beings will have to worship him, because human beings will have to adore him, because he invested more in us. So every time you make profit, your brain starts to widen up. You can't waste your time in loving an obstacle. In building, loving a car, trying to dream of the land to the cloud. Where are we going to cruise the land to the when you have to the land? You see, you have to be a great investor. You have to invest your time into people. Time, they will not forget. They will remember you. But you see, I didn't build any houses straight. When I got that money, I had to turn it around again. I had to do the second round by renting, renovating, selling again, and I started to collect some land. It's called land ticket. The first four plots I bought, I gave one away to one of my brothers and one of my sisters. Now, you heard what I told you about giving. It's one of the most powerful things about me. I have no fear to give. The hardest thing is not the money that we make. The hardest thing is to give the money that we make. And when you start to give without fear, take this from me. I can assure you, your car will never run dry. Yeah. Your mother is in the corner waiting for you. Your sister, your brother, your friend. They need you. Be there for them. You might think your money is going, but those people are looking up to you. Either their big brother, their savior, they're blessing you, they're praying for you, when you do it a thousand times, a thousand people say, God bless you. The universe is hearing it. The universe can see that you are different from the others who are sick pockets. They are always keeping their money and think that keeping the money will become more. No. Money is a lot of barriers. 
Money needs to be used. Money needs to be given. Money needs to be invested. Money needs to be shared proportionally. And it can bring and attract a lot of blessing for you. But here is what happened when I decided to build. That's what made me the man that I today. You know, building a building, do you know, is the artificial way creating a human being. Yeah. So, and I'm going to tell you, every building has over 10,000 components. The wire that goes through the back of the block where switches, plugs, plastic, this, concrete, sand, cement, hey, it doesn't finish. Towels, toilet, bowls, sink, taps, but it's a lot. And every one of them needs to be engineered, needs to be planned, needs to be designed. Then when you finish, you connect it to a main power, a main source. You know, that's how I saw it. It was interesting. I just felt like, okay, maybe this is how the white man looked at an eagle and made a plane. Because the eagle could fly a thousand miles. So he looked at the eagle and he created a plane. I looked at a human being and I created a house. So my question is different from the other people's building. I'm not a builder. I'm not a developer. I sell spaces. I'm about to share the secret with you. My normal principle in my real estate business is selling spaces. I create them. My first land, everybody was building one house on their plot. I went there in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. I did some prayers. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And the wisdom came wow, to build two houses on one block. And so I put two houses on one plot, but it cost me one and a half. 150% to build the two houses instead of the 200%. So I say my, I say 50% of the profit. Plus, I have two houses. Sorry. I have two houses instead of one house. And I finished one completely. I sold the other one. And when I was selling the other one, I asked for two weeks so I can finish the room in the next house. Then I will move in and I will start two at the back. My wife was my girlfriend then. She, she, she saw the move. She saw the move. She realized that this guy is a half man. The outside world, I was cool. You know, I come to take what belongs to me and I do it calm. Because you have to let the brain, you have to let the heart lead you. And you have to let the soul empower you. Just go and get it done. After doing all of that in the stretch of doing eight houses, I wanted to still put more and more and more on the plot. Then one day, I put eight houses on two plots. The maximization was growing, it was becoming interesting. Then one day, I brought some architects. I was using Ghanaian architects. When I tell them to do this, then they will tell me, no, you have to do this. This will not work. I said, no, but that's what I want. See, I'm telling you guys about this issue. The guys were saying, no, you have to do 18. So I started looking for architects that can give me 40 apartments instead of 18. I found this white guy in South Africa. And he said, I can do, I can put 40 apartments on two plots. So, 22 apartments by 250,000 
If you calculate that 250,000 by 22 apartments is 2.5 million dollars profit. That architect who was forcing me to do 18 was actually going to make me lose 2.5 million dollars. He has not seen that money before, but he's stopping you from making it because he doesn't want your decision to be taken by you. That is what I'm saying. Hold on to your decision. When this white architect came and gave me the 40 apartments, I built a building. Some of you will know that building. It's called College. I named it after my mother. You see, my simple principle for my business is maximization. If you dare break my rules or my principle, you can be my wife, you can be my mother, you can be my friend, you can be my weapon. That's it. Because this principle to last for many centuries. That is how you build businesses. Your reputation will live longer than you. But you have to have a principle. If it's McDonald's, let it be McDonald's. Don't let anybody change the taste of your chips, the size of your drink, and how it's packaged. So you started it, and if someone comes to change it, they have changed your vision. They have changed your destiny. They have changed what you have invented. That decision that you took, someone has come and changed it as a choice. Would you like that to happen to you? Please hold on to your decision. Never let it go. So as I was saying, this maximization has become a big thing. But I want to take you to one of my biggest maximizations that the world gave me eight different awards, but nobody in Ghana, in the political sector, in the corporate sector, even said, well done. That project, I put two architects together and three engineers together. They told me that it was impossible. I made it possible. Even the architect and the engineer did not believe it. And that building is called the Owat Oscar Street. It is 108 apartments on one and a half block. Yeah. It is, uh, I repeat it, it is 108 apartments on one and a half block. It's one of the biggest maximization in history. I saw white people in Portugal, white people in Barcelona, in Madrid, and they were looking at me like I'm so big and they were clapping because they yourself, they haven't done it. The point I'm making is we Ghanaians, we Africans, there is so much we can do when we put our mind, our heart, and our soul behind the decision that we take. I wanted to change the real estate industry. Today, I am sharing my whole real estate secret with you. So I wanted to move from residential to commercial. I did the two at the same time. I killed two birds with one stone, but now I'm learning to kill four birds with one stone. I'm a teacher. I introduced Uber Homes in the real estate business. I used the apartment as service hotels. I did that because I realized that hotels were taking at least 18 to 26 percent of the world's accommodation regularly. That's a lot of money. And I realized that Airbnb had also come in the market and was definitely taking a lot of money for accommodation. 
So I decided to come in between them and create my own dish. That's what you're seeing. The number one, the best dress, all of this hotel that you're seeing is because I'm challenging the hotel and I'm challenging Airbnb and I'm taking some of the money they're both taking. I am in the mix now. I am in the mix. I can't go nowhere, but I'm in there now. I talk to companies like Marriott, like Hilton. I understand their businesses very well. I understand the hotel management agreement. I understand development certifications. I understand a lot of things. But you know what happened with this real estate? These guys have always thought that they would catch up with me. So doing that, I see that everybody will start doing apartments. When I start townhouses and everybody I say, hey Ghana, copy that. They yeah, so they don't want to use their own head though. When they see your certain salute, everybody will stop selling at part. Start selling salute. Because they think the business. But I was happy that God has given me wisdom, grace, power to control the industry. That's what I started doing and thinking. I went into from commercial, I went into industrialization. People, I am still talking about real estate. Real estate, I've already given you three different parts of real estate. Residential, commercial, now we are on industrial. Industrial is what I am introducing to the country right now as a new point. Industrialization is the only thing that is going to build this nation. We are ready to improve this country by building technology house, industrial house, putting plants in every region, creating jobs, 10,000 per apartment. When you put one plant in a building and you start to refine the products, you will be making money while you are sleeping. But the people will be working 24 hours. The machine is the robot. We should have done this 50 years ago. We are about to start. That girl collecting the rent that nightclub and selling that nightclub and realizing that real estate is where I have to go. Because it's been 10 years, 12 years, since I started screaming about petroleum. And I know some of you have heard about my per petroleum. Uh, you see it right there? It's on the screen. That is the vision. The vision of building an industrial hub, a technology hub, and an energy city. Many look at it and they think it's impossible. It is possible to bring everything into reality. These things you are seeing, it took me four years, three to four years, to buy a 2,000 acre land in Takrade. I have to put 65 families, 11 chiefs, one subdivisional chief, and the entire commission of this country, so I can do the acquisition. I purchased with ownership. I grew so fast in the business. In fact, I was growing faster than the government. <laughs> but, because he has created the policy, but he is not learning from his own policy. He is not taking advantage of his own policy. So from the back, I started to take advantage. I was becoming a Godzilla. I was becoming a giant. But at the same time, in the sight of mankind, I was seen as an act very small. The greatest people feel very little inside. The greatest people were not born, but they grew great. It's because they think great. It's because they move heavily. They learn mistakes from the greatest people. And they move with it. They run with it. Petroleum is the only thing that is going to be replicated 
in African countries because without industrialization, no nation, no country has ever been built on this planet Earth. The Chinese use industrialization to build their country. The Americans use industrialization to build their country. The Europeans use industrialization to build their country. We just saw Dubai. They used 46 years to build over 3 million apartments, hotels, 46 years. 3 million apartments, houses, buildings, hotels, airports, planes, everything. 46 years. Can you imagine the speed? It was industrialization. Our leaders have been running away from this. And this same industrialization is stopping us from getting jobs. Young men and young women, I stand here today that me standing in front of you is not because I'm a young successful man and I just come to tell you how rich or how wealthy I've become. No, I am investing in you because I trust in you. I believe in you. I know you're young. I know you have the energy. I know you're the future man. I know you're the future woman. You know, you women are the strength of this country. And the old people, they can advise us. But I strongly believe that they have lived their future very well. And I will not rely on them to build our future. Because they have outlived their future. It's going to take us to come together to look into building our future. And my message that I'm preaching, and I'm telling and I'm sharing, and it's also my purpose, is that we need to industrialize ourselves, to change our mindset, the way we think, our skill set. We need to change it. We need to make sure that we think like the Western people and what they did. What you want to do to you? Are you going to hate some white man because they told you he took your gold from you? Or are you going to learn how he took your gold from you and think about what you're going to take back from them? Do you know the plans I have? I am planning to create some help of physical. I am going to make sure everyone in China one day will take some of my medicine so they can become poorer. I will take all the money back from these people. I will tell them, I will make sure that they are taking from me, that they are taking back from me. I am telling you that no, you need to be a thinker. You need to be a man. You need to be a strong man. for me. 
The universe is going to bring to me. And God likes what I'm doing. He's always saying that my son, not many have done what you're doing. You should go out, you should go out there to them and tell them to do more than you. I'm here today to tell you to do more than me because after this industrialization, guess what? I was coming for the last one in the real estate industry. National development. How to develop the country. How to do national development. You see, they didn't see me coming. But when I wanted to start with national development, I went to buy two targets. And the target I bought one from South Africa, the other one I bought it from Dubai. And it was a big, a big bit with a shape. And the shape thought, hmm, African black guy, he's not gonna buy this white tiger. I bought it. That's how shape act my food found out about me. So I want to show you how I invest and my mind behind the investment. When I was buying the two tigers, I was buying it to break the record of this crowd. The Asian man says that tigers will never survive in West Africa, in East Africa, in North Africa, only in South Africa because their climate has four different climates. So they said in Africa, it won't survive here. But that's my thought. But also Asian men, they don't have gold. So a lot of my gold is surviving there and your tiger cannot survive. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> So, so when I was buying it, I knew that this is the only two things that will let me do my first biggest national development to build a zoo. So a zoo is a national development. A museum is a national development. A stadium is a national development. See, real estate is pretty. It doesn't end. These two tigers brought me a lot of trouble. I got a lot of things too. And a lot of popularity. And lots of things. And they cost me every two, three days a car. Yeah, my wife is here. They cost me more than the money I feed my whole family with in the house. But if I don't give it to them, maybe I'll wake up and I need to have thought. They're hungry. They're beating me. But I call the two animals Buddha and Jesus. Buddha and Jesus. Share a story with you. Say you want to find out about my success story. It's not just riches, it's the call. So I want you to take your time and listen. Buddha and Tite. So this is the name of the slave that they took out of Africa that has lost his place. What I'm basically telling this tiger is that you lost it and I'm bringing you to the domestic world. You have to learn to survive. But I have a trainer that has trained the tiger Today, they can play football with us. When you tell them to sit, they sit. When you tell them to lie down, they lie down. They become a part of us. And guess what? Ghana is going to be the first country in East Africa, West Africa, and North Africa that has tigers. That is going to breed tigers. And freedom because of freedom has finally now built a zoo. I've built a home for the animals too. I did not only give shelter for human beings, I am also giving shelter for animals. I feel empowered. I feel brave. Some people will call it work. I call it achievement. Because I am doing things that I'm happy about. So the first side of real estate are covered. Now, I just need to expand it. 
and it's going to take you to be with me on this journey. That we have a country to build, we have a nation to revive, we have a culture to redeem, and we have a continent to build. I came here today to share with you this story and to replace that fear in you and leave you with hope. I came here residential, commercial, industrial, national. I came here today because I want you to know you can acquire wealth. And the more you build your wealth, the more you collect these things, the more you have nothing for them. This is the sad story. But you've got a lot of cars, you have a lot of water, you have a lot of food, and you don't have any use for them. And the people who are looking the most, they know exactly what to do with what you have. I'm trying to tell you what life is about. The only reason why you know what to do with what I have is because you don't do what I'm doing. What I'm doing occupies my time. So even if I have a Bugatti, I barely have the time to drive it. If I have a hundred shoes, I'm going to work every eight o'clock to eight o'clock. Sometimes I am in the office till twelve. I end up sleeping with my shoes and I wake up and I realize that I didn't my clothes off. But I pray, go to the gym, run, prepare myself and back again doing it and doing it. So some of you should remember if you're going to become successful and be rich, you will end up as a slave to your own wealth. Are you ready? The question is, are you ready for that? Are you ready? Because you have to protect whatever that you're going to build, whatever that you're going to pay. You have to manage it. You have to work for it. You have to protect it. You might not sleep that six hours anymore. You might not have the chance to sit down with your friends and talk and laugh anymore. You might lose all your time. So, God doesn't give the blessing to everyone. For some blessing is going to come with a lot of challenges. And it's not everyone that has the heart to face these challenges. But if you want to face these challenges for success, rule number one, prepare yourself. Chances come for the prepared mind. There is no such thing as luck. Rule number two, take the decision that you're ready to be responsible for. Because there's going to be a time you're going to be alone in this world. Even though there are people around you, you are alone. Because in your mind, there is so much going on. And you are alone. You're very lonely at the top. You're very lonely <laughs> at the top. And rule number three, prepare for your enemy and prepare for your hatred. For there are going to be so many of them. And everybody will want to pull you down. And everybody wants to bring you down. But you have to be so strong. You have to have a soul of a lion, the balls of a tiger. And you have to look straight. And you have to look straight. Don't let nobody distract you. Don't let nobody pull you. Don't let nobody scare you. Look in the eyes of the people around you. And look out. Take them. Pull them closer to you. Control the world. Be the man of dignity. Be the man of integrity. Be the man of humility. Be the man with grace, with glory, with oil. Be ordained. Be powerful. Don't be weak. Because every time you're weak, you need to find the strength again. And even when you die, you still have to be alive. 
because your soul will remain there. Do not make headlines, make history. Let the people remember you. Let the people thank you. Let the people bless you. And remember, you are on your own. It's great to learn from the greatest people. It's great to be subdued. It's a great feeling to be humble. When you have it all, your ego is put up. People become arrogant. You want to see the true talent of a man? Wait for them to get money and see how they treat people. And see how they look at people. And see how they value people. No, you shouldn't be that person. You can't let money change you. Change the world with money. You cannot let money change you. You cannot let success get to your head. But take a minute and think about how you can significantly add value to other people's lives so you can become continentally, internationally, globally successful. Today, I have opened up for the nation of this country because we are separated and we are divided. Everything has become our quarter being westernized. Everything is about our tribe. Everything we have to pay for. We have to pay for jobs. When the job has to pay us, we have to pay to become a policeman. We have to pay to drive, but the policeman will take right from you. We have to pay the policeman when you have a criminal case before they will listen to you. We have divided ourselves and we're losing the mentality of development. I have spent this hour, 15 minutes, and 43 seconds. Don't ask me how I was counting my time. But this is a very long time that I've shared with you. To say a part of my soul is with you. I'm not leaving you alone. I'm leaving you as a part of me. And I know my knowledge and my wisdom is going to stay with you. Thank you very much. And I hope you can put those on our YouTube page. I hope you enjoy this moment. I hope you will see some good. Thank you. We are out of the house. My first question. I, uh, I would love to take the questions from each faculty of all. I don't know, but I want you to like break it down. Like I don't know, but is there any enough questions? Oh, it's not enough. Do you have more time left? No? So what time do you go? Okay. All right. All right. So we 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 need to make sure.